And then there's a key. Boom. Shakalaka. Uh, but anyway, for many years of their lives, my aunt and uncle owned their own restaurant, and they never had, like, their own premises for it. They always... Oh, I want this. I want you to kick this, don't I? Uh, so what they would do is they would run their restaurant out of a local tavern, a local bar. Like, they would, they would handle their... Uh, like, they would handle their food and... Sometimes they did delivery service, delivery orders, and then eventually they went on and they did have their own pizza place for a while. But this was just a commonality in my life growing up, was whatever, they always had good standings with one of the local taverns in town, and because of that, they'd be like, hey, we're looking to open up a restaurant, can we do it out of your kitchen? Yeah, sure, why not? So what ended up happening was for a couple years in a row, uh, my mother and father always worked during the day, and instead of paying for, like, a like a summer school service or, like, a, a babysitter full-time, what they would do is my aunt and uncle would just babysit us during the day for six hours or so while my, my parents were at work. And so some of that time, they would, we'd, during the day, we'd be in the bar while they were doing prep work in the kitchen and whatever. And, you know, you know what? There's actually a lot of fun stuff for little kids to do in a bar. My brother and I shot a lot of pool when we were little kids. Uh... But, every bar, getting back to the original tangent of this story, every bar that we can recall had some sort of arcade game in them. And these weren't, like, I'm not talking about, like, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat kind of stuff. Uh, ooh, I have to pause the game here. I have to pause the game here, and I have to go back into the tunnel. I have to go back into the tunnel and click an OK button. Oh, no. Well, unfortunately, whatever video I was running over there is now lost to time because Windows had to update. And I didn't get to the OK button in time. And so now my computer is going to restart, which is going to kill the... Which is going to kill the software render and... Yeah, everything's bad forever. So, there's a couple different kinds of arcades that you would see in the bar scene. I don't know if this is still true, because I probably haven't been in a bar since... <laughs> since those days, really, but... Like, one, time, one thing you'd see is, like, kind of a bar top arcade, usually like a gambling kind of thing, like a video poker kind of thing. Uh, obviously, there was always a lot of pinball. Our favorite was the Adams Family Pinball, which one of the local taverns had. And... But sometimes they'd have, like, these, like, weird, porny arcade games. Like, picture, like, a standard puzzle game. Something like, uh... Like, it would never be just actual Tetris. It'd be like a Tetris ripoff. Actually, Quix was quite popular, if you know the game Quix. I think I remember Clax once. Just actually Clax, not a porn version of Clax. But, oh, I need this P-Switch. P-Swatch, whatever it is. Uh, the idea being, like, in, in the game Quix, you could... And somebody's going to say I'm mispronouncing it, it's supposed to be Kix, because there's not actually a, a U, it's just Q-I-X. Weird game, weird game. But, the idea is you have this square, this rectangle, you have to draw a line out from the rectangle, and whenever you came back to the border, you would score that part of the rectangle. And then it would color in, and then you could move along it as though it was the border. And eventually you'd have to try to cover as much of the screen as you could in this way. Probably it's easier to see if you just look at a video for, for Quicks, but... What you would do is, like, somebody would just make a Quicks clone, okay? Just like a janky, it's Quicks, but whatever clone. And instead of just coloring in, like, a shaded pattern or something in the parts you scored, what it would do is reveal the picture underneath. Which would usually be a scantily clad lady. <gasps> Scandalous. And you see lots of different variations of this on various bars that I'd been to. But this is a time honored tradition. And I imagine that the game, it's a completely real game. It's not an officially licensed game from Nintendo, it's not gonna have the seal of quality on it. But yeah, it's called Bubble Bath Babes. And I have to imagine that this was one of these, like, porny bar games that somebody had made. And dude is riding my keister. Just right on my butt. We're gonna go up top and get a dragon coin. And hopefully that guy leave him behind. There we go. 
Yeah, <laughs> I really want to rewind that one. I'm not going to use the rewind button in this run. Even though I really, really want to. I'm not going to. But yeah, I have to imagine it's somewhere in a bar in Topeka, Kansas, or one of those other cities that doesn't really exist. There was like a 16-bit arcade version of Bubble Bath Babes, which was just this... I don't... What was the actual... It might not have been a clone of another puzzle game. I want to say it was like Puyo Puyo, maybe? So I remember like different colored bubbles and you had to match them up. But if you got a high score, you got to see a topless mermaid with little pixel nipples, and it was very exciting. And now this video is no longer appropriate for advertisers, because I said pixel nipples. But it's like some company must have owned the rights to that game and was like, hey, let's do an 8-bit Famicom port. And they did. And it's a thing that exists. And... I guess the jury is out... Like, people are going to disagree over whether stuff like Bubble Bath Babes deserves to be remembered. Like, is this actually art that we need to preserve for the future? Like, is this something... I don't really have the answer to that question. My personal opinion is that all art should be preserved in some form somewhere. Like, it's better that it exists than it not exists. Because a team of people came together and for whatever reason decided to put creative energy into a Puyo Puyo clone where you could see pixel nipples. And maybe it's true that those people, if they had come together in a different way instead, uh, to create something quote-unquote more worthwhile, the world would be a richer place, but that's not what they did. They decided to go with pixel nipples. It's just the rich tapestry of human experience here. But Nintendo's not going to do... They're not going to lift a finger to preserve Bubble Bath Babes. And probably whoever made it back in the 90s is long defunct. And even if they weren't, like, how are they going to preserve this 8-bit... Like, nowadays there's way better... You go on Steam for a dollar and get 17 visual novels with HD nipples and, you know, the blurrier bits down south. I need a cape is what I need. That's why we're going back in here. In fact, I kind of need two capes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this man's cape. We're going to exit the level. We're going to go back in. And then we're going to take his brother's cape. My computer over there did not restart. Which worries me because that means Windows 10 started to update. And then decided not to for some reason. And that's very concerning. Now, the only way that that art, this bubble bath babe, gets preserved is because somebody dumped a ROM of it. Like, that's it. That's that's the only way this game can ever be remembered. And you can extrapolate that across all software. Uh, one of the games that actually does this really well now is Minecraft. It didn't used to, but nowadays... I need to go in here. I was going to go back for that cape. That would have been stupid. Braving all those ghosts swooping down to get that cape. And you'll see why it's stupid here in a second. No, when you play Minecraft, you have a little drop-down menu you can go to now, where it lets you play any previous version of Minecraft they've ever released. This is the top secret area, and when I was a kid, I used to come back to this area in between every single level and get a Yoshi and two capes. Alright, let's go ahead and do I do the Star Road this early? Seems kind of strange to do the Star World so early in a Mario run, but I mean, this is the earliest place that you can reach it, so I'll... Nerds. I think that every piece of commercial software... I mean, every piece of software, inevitably, really, like, should be preserved... Nope. <laughs> alright, alright, we'll do this the dumb way. We'll do this the... Like, if I saw this at a Mario Maker level, I would think it's janky and stupid. Way. And I do think it's a shame that some companies either can't or won't preserve their software. And in those cases, piracy is really all we have. That's the only way any of this software is going to be remembered. Uh, 
I think one exit is in the coin door and one exit is above me. And I'm needing to get both anyway, and I guess we'll just go up for now. I don't remember if this is the real exit or the secret exit. There's one level very late in the game where the real exit and the secret exit are switched. Which is kind of a mean trick, but also kind of funny. Why isn't this guy in Mario Maker? Can somebody answer me this? Why can't I fight a big dang boo in Mario Maker? I would love for them to add this... There, there's such a bad assortment of boss fights in Mario Maker. And then in cases where I try to purchase, or I'm trying to get a hold of software that I've already purchased, and still have the, like, the serial key for, in those cases, it's like, the company really has two options. They can either help me find a version of the software so I can use the software that I bought, or I'm going to go somewhere else where they're going to have the software that I bought. It's really that simple. So even though I broke man's law by pirating... It must have been Camp... I want to say Camtasia 8 or 9. It was one of those. And I certainly did. And I will never say different. It was morally wrong of me. But it's like, practically, what other choice did I have? I don't... In this case, I didn't even want the upgraded version of the software. Anyway, it's like, yeah, these all these new features. I probably still have their email saved somewhere. Like, yeah, you got all these new features in Camtasia 11 or 12 or whatever the new version was. Like, I literally only use your software to crop or clip videos and, like, that's it. That's all I do. <laughs> and very, very, not even... Actually, you know what? I wasn't even doing any audio editing back then. Any audio problems that existed in the video just remained... I don't do that anymore except for Lemmings. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the video that I've got rendering over there. I've got Lemmings video. So hopefully Windows 10... Yeah, it looks like it didn't restart. Looks like I might be okay over there. I don't want anybody... Okay? You especially, Dave. I don't want Dave to go out into the wild internet. Onto the... Onto the Reddits. Or, or, the, or, the, or the 4chans, or wherever the kids are hanging out these days, and be like, Brick Road says it's okay to pirate software! That's not what I said, Dave. What I said was, it's the only practical recourse in certain cases. For example, if you want to play Bubble Bath Babes on the NES, some jackanapes has already gone down and said, Brick Road, you should play Bubble Bath Babes for the channel. Nope, not happening! Not gonna do it. For one, I don't like Puyo Puyo. And I'm pretty sure that's what Bubble Bath Babes is. And for two, if I did like Puyo Puyo, I've got it on this virtual console thing here. I can just play it. I've also got it on Steam. I've got almost the same kind of thing as this virtual console on Steam. I've got a Sega Genesis uh, Classics. And I think one of those is Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is again, just Puyo Puyo. Uh, but I don't really like Puyo Puyo, it's not... I don't think it's that great of a puzzle game. I'd probably prefer Tetris and all of its ilk. Uh, and also, I can't have pixel nipples on the channel. Do you guys have any idea how many excellent games there are that I won't play for my channel because they don't fit the, like, rating that I like to keep? I like to keep it kind of PG... a, a light PG-13, if I can. Although, probably I've said pixel nipples enough in this video that we're up to a light R at this point. I really should not be playing the level this way. This is kind of a dumb way to do it. Okay, I think we're safe now. There's an excellent, excellent game on Steam that I loved and would really fit the theme of my channel a lot. Because it's a, it's a pixel game, it's an indie game, it's not super long. I don't really care about this mini game, so we're going to skip it. Uh... I think it's called Gunbound. It's an excellent, excellent little indie game on Steam. And it's up like a puzzle platformer kind of thing, but the puzzles have multiple solutions. Like you could do like stealth or your hacking and all that kind of stuff. And I won't play it because this game uses the F word like it's going out of style. Like why would you make an adorable little pixel indie game and then fill it up with just the crudest language possible? Like I could never... 
Yoshi, no! Oh. Oh, okay, I got him. I got the Yoshi back. And a lot of this game, this series, is just going to be the tops of levels, because I'm going to be flying above a lot of them, because there's so many different ways to fly. So just get used to it, I guess. I didn't promise this game was going to be entertaining at all. I just said I was going to play it. Uh, at one point, I wanted to play Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I figured I could get a, like a 30-episode series out of that. Excuse me, Goomba! Oh, the Goombas are parachuting in. Oh, I'm getting my Yoshi back, though. Haha! -ha, I win in the end. Uh, for obvious reasons, I can't play any of the Grand Theft Auto games on the channel, even though I think that Vice City in particular is excellent, and from a gameplay standpoint, I think it would be a lot of fun to have on the channel, but there are... <laughs> There are missions in that game where you gotta, like, kill a hooker and stash her in the trunk and then dump her into the ocean or something, and, uh, maybe... Maybe not a channel where my, like, player- or my viewer demographics skew into, like, the 18 to 22 range. <laughs> or even younger than that. It's rare that I get all nine of these, especially if you have a cape, because the thing is you gotta jump with a kind of particular cadence to get them all to match up. And if you have a cape, you kind of have to finagle the button, because if you drift down at all by holding the jump button with your cape, what actually happens... I think I can fly up here, can't I? I can if I didn't duck. I think there's something up there if I get up there. If I get up there. It's going to be a tricky proposition, but... I misunderstood where to fly. So I guess we gotta fly from this way. Oh, they're kind of synced up now, which is good. Except if I go back too far, then that other one's off the screen. There we go. I don't know where the other one went. He just despawned. He's gone. Skip the minigame. Excellent. 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 And yeah, we skipped half the level. Although I probably could have done the level in the time it took me to get that fly. The current Mario Maker that I'm working on, in case you guys are wondering why I haven't put out a Mario Maker, a new Mario Maker level in a while. I'm working on a cape level and I'm trying to de-jank it because I want it to be a cape level that like, the goal is to make it look really impressive, even though all you're doing is pushing, a, like, a particular button at a particular spot. Like, I think it'll still be a tricky level. Because you have to fly in a particular way, and, like, pull back to get height in particular spots, or hold forward or back in particular areas. And I'm trying to get it to work consistently, and it's been frustrating to make. But I am still working on it tentatively. In fact, after I'm done with this recording session, I'll probably pick it back up. Take a look at it, but... I've got a couple of... Mario Maker levels kind of in the pot, so to speak. I'm still playing the game, obviously. Like, I haven't given up on the game. Let's go kill... Morton... Koopa Jr. This is Morton, right? I don't know who Morton Koopa was. Like, it's Bowser's... One of Bowser's friends that he lost in Nam or something. I have no idea. But he's taking care of Morton Koopa Jr. now. As a kid, I didn't understand that the Koopalings were just young... Like, whatever species Bowser is. They're just unrelated Koopas, right? I didn't understand that they weren't his children. I thought they were all... Seven of them were his children. Like, damn, Bowser! Sow that seed, boy! That's another thing that's going to get my, this video flagged not appropriate for advertisers. Whatever, I make my money on Patreon anyway. I don't need you advertisers. I don't need you for nothing. Shoutouts to Frago Rock for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video and you'd like to see more, please tickle my thumb, leave a friendly comment, and ring my little bell.